really come on for spectacular numbers in the first half. Looks like Marcus Goodlow. Let's see if the Lobos go to the option here. Greg Oliver on the count. Marquez Pope coming up from the safety position. Kind of read that play from the get-go. Does an excellent job. Wanted to give you those numbers on Barsotti. 14 of 26, 234 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, his first of the year after 93 in succession without an INT. He's rushed it four times for 46 yards and two touchdowns. What an effort by Barsotti. Just Mark, we talked about it in the get-go of the game. And Mark's performing. He wants to be the one that's making the plays for the Bulldogs, and he's had an outstanding half. Good low fumble, but caught it in midair and took up field a couple yards. Thinking about how bad this is, it even could have been worse. Dogs on the one drive when the Lobo scored had an interception right in their hands and dropped it. It looked like about an 80-yard return the other way, and then the Lobo scored two plays later. That was Brian Porter's moment that he could have what are they what was the old fighting could have been, been a contender could have been, been a contender was that from requiem from a heavyweight well he could have had a touchdown he didn't hit me in the jar he wouldn't have knocked me out 59 7 bulldogs third down and four final 25 seconds of the first half interception marquez pope and he has a lane Woo. he wanted to take somebody out rather than take the ball in the end zone 18 seconds left well you're going to learn as a quarterback you can't throw the ball late over the middle. And that's what Mr. Goodlow tried to do. And Marquez Pope, being an experienced free safety, was able to pick the ball off. Goodlow's a terrific athlete, but as a passer, he's only 40%. That is his fifth interception in limited play. So Marcus doesn't read the field very well. Now he gets Looks good left. protection and just not, not good against an experienced free safety. Watch this hit Marquez Pope does. Well, I can't. Oh. <laughs> I really thought he was going to take it in for the end zone, but he likes contact too much. Uh -oh. Barsotti incomplete on the slant pattern to Kelvin Means. Well, you're kicking a dog when he's down. And Four-quarter game. Yeah, just remember who said that, folks. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I got a kind of question. I, I don't think you take a knee, and, but I also... No, there's only 14 seconds left. Do you run the clock out? Well, you know, as it, you, you preach it's a four-quarter game. You preach it's a four-quarter game. And it's, if you call a play that, that gives up to your team when the ball's on the 18-yard line, it's, it's a little scary. Michael Ross, the five. Clock will stop with seven seconds to move the chains down to the two-yard line. And Bulldogs want to score, I would imagine. Does Jim Sweeney want to run another play? Does he call a timeout? They already have called it. Well, I don't know. He's looking at Rich. I know he's kind of looking at Rich thinking, did you call that timeout? Or it's a difficult. Well, the fans are starting to boo, and it's mixed reviews. Well, actually, Barsotti called timeout immediately. As soon as Jones went down, Barsotti turned to the referee and called the time right away. So he didn't really look to the bench to get that. Well, what do you do? I mean, I mean, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, really I don't like in. to see him throwing for the post for the touchdown. I, I mean, that, that, that may be, you know, when he's down. What about leaving Martin in your offense? Game? Well, he's going to run him through the first, first half. I think the dogs will come out here in their full house backfield first time all night. Probably run a sweep left or right or the bootleg. Well, Barsotti's run it in the last two times. Well, they're going to be prepared for the bootleg on the left side here. You can see that. He goes to the wide side of the field. He might be able to take it in easy. Dogs are on balance line to the right as well. Neil, Berg, and Daigle are the three running backs behind Barzota. I got to believe sweep right. Number 22, Lorenzo Neal, is lined up at left half, so I think they'll sweep right with Lorenzo Neal. If I play devil's advocate, if you really want to score, you throw the football, you get more downs. If you run, you may run the clock out if you don't go in. Well, they don't need the touchdown, but I think if you throw the football, they as miss. they score. Well, they run it. Touchdown, Fresno State. Well, once I saw Lorenzo Neal go to the three-point stance, I knew he wasn't going to sweep right. He was leaning forward. He let the play through the hole. Well, maybe the Dogs won 100 tonight. They're well on their way. 
65 in the first half. I've never seen anything quite like this. Dago with his Herschel Walker impression that leaps up in the air. Good job by Anthony Dago. Scores his first touch on his Bulldog. Hey, Sam Cunningham. I know you're young, but Sam Cunningham was the man from SC that used to go over the top. Sam Bam. You got it. Good block, for, uh, good block by Mike Berg also, who came in at fullback on that play. How about 66-7? We're still in the second quarter with three seconds left. Earl Oliver. 66. <laughs> Mm. Well, I'm, I'm out of gas. I'm yeah, on empty. I mean, you guys want to fill for a while? Talk about the pennant race today? <laughs> hey, I'm it's from I'm from LA. I, I can't talk about that. Got to give Atlanta all the credit in the world, though. And uh, Dad, nobody thought they'd have that bar opportunity. Ex Bulldog Terry Pendleton, I think, is a big leader for I the. I think he's the MVP. Atlanta I want to ask Dave a question. Dave, Atlanta's all year long their goal is to beat the Dodgers, and they finally do it. Can they sustain that now and take it into the next step? going to the playoffs and World Pirates? Series? I definitely think they can. The Pirates are on a mission, though, because a lot of a lot of people feel this is the Pirates' last year of having this team together. They figure Benita, Benita's gone. The only thing that concerns me about the Braves, Tommy Glavin will probably start the playoffs, and he, he has looked like a tired pitcher to me the last three weeks. Well, they've won a lot of games that are on. Congratulations to Bobby Cox and that group. And congratulations to the Giants because they played with a, a fever pitch purpose against the Dodgers. Imagine 102 years since a team has gone from last place to first and it happened twice this year, Minnesota and Atlanta. Well, you know, it's an interesting night when we're talking about the World Championship in baseball. And it's been an unbelievable first half. Well, they're, getting a, State. they're getting a little bit of a cheer for the fans. 66-7 Bulldogs. Three seconds left in the half, and the clock won't move. Nobody touched the ball. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. <laughs> and you knew that would happen. Yeah. Murphy's Law at this point. What do you do, Kevin, if you're Mike Shepard? What do you talk to your club about at halftime? Resign. Uh, no, <laughs> Randy. I don't know. You know, I, I had had an opportunity in my first real legitimate NFL start to play against the Minnesota Vikings and it, it was a similar situation it wasn't quite this bad but we were down and beat for most of the game and you just keep on plugging away and try to be as tenacious and competitive as you can we'll have the complete scoreboard show at halftime shot with Gary Cunningham the athletic director at Fresno State Derek Coffin will run out the clock mercifully this one ends at least the first half for New Mexico. I don't know about you guys. I feel bad for the Lobos, but you do have to tip the cap to Fresno State. The Bulldogs were magnificent in the first 30 minutes. Just a great job by the Dogs executing the game plan offensively, defensively, kicking game. Geez, the kickoff cover had a little work. I'll tell you one thing. They're serving notice to the Western Athletic Conference that they're going to be a force next year. This score will be read by a lot of coaches in the whack, whatever it turns out to be tonight. And yeah, whatever it's going to be is going to be ugly as far as New Mexico and the Western Athletic Conference are concerned. 66-7. Fresno State at halftime. And Coach uh, Jim Sweeney on the sideline putting the headgear on. And Coach, just an incredible performance by your entire football team. Yeah, aren't they playing well in all phases? The defense is amazing. They're taking the ball, stripping it from the receivers, running. and Execution. Just awesome execution on offense. Good pass protection. Great catches. Can have an opportunity to see Trent Dilfer in the second half. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure we'll have to see a lot of those second kids now. Jim, I thought your special teams were magnificent. The kickoff coverage team really set the tone early. Yeah, our coach has been working on that real hard, trying to get some enthusiasm. We changed the people in some of those instances, too. Took off some guys, put in some younger people, and we're real proud of the way they played. Coach, it's kind of an interesting situation. Obviously, you want to dominate the game, and you lead 66-7 at halftime. How do you pull it back so you don't embarrass the opponent? Well, I was tremendously embarrassed. I don't know if my memory is not that bad, but uh, I, I was uh, tremendously embarrassed in Albuquerque in case you weren't there. Yeah. Okay, exactly. baby. Exactly. Go get them. All right. Bye. A little bit of an interesting answer there. It's 66-7. Mike Shepard laid it on the Bulldogs a few years ago, and perhaps a payback. We'll have more after this. But 
Budman. This Labor Day, find a Budman inside packages of Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry Draft. Budman! You big lug. You could've had a brand spanking new raft. Chins up, men. Here comes a winner. Yowza. Mm. Hey. You could win one of thousands of prizes, oh. including sailboats. Man, that one really hurt. Oh. Give me three. Heads up, man. Somebody just snapped your 12 pack. What? <laughs> Wait for me! Man. Mark your calendar. Because True Value Hardware Stores have a great tool at a great price every month in 1991. This month, it's a Master Mechanic 17-piece socket set. It has 12 sockets plus extensions, a spinner handle, ratchet, and storage box. And in October, it's just $9.44 while supplies last at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. For football season tickets and seat options, call 278-DOGS. Bulldog Spotlight is brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. Fresno State quarterback Mark Barsotti is a take-charge kind of guy on the football field. Even the casual observer can see the senior from Madera leads his team by example. But what fans do not see is the way Barsotti handles situation in the huddle as a kind of coach on the field. Uh, I mean, there's times when you, you kind of get uh, your feathers ruffled and you have to get on somebody. But, they, you know, they know you mean well, and, and you just hope that they, you know, I'm sure they all understand. And just to get them going and, and uh, you know, it, we don't have to do it too much, but there's occasions when you, when you have to get on somebody just to get them to play better. The one thing, you know, you can't point fingers at anybody and stuff like that. You have to take it upon yourself to cool everybody else down in case something goes wrong. You have to be kind of the, uh, I guess, the mother of the group. You know, uh. Barsotti has started every game since his freshman year and will leave Fresno State as the winningest quarterback in school history. But what about life after Bulldog football? I don't know, I hope to get the opportunity to play professional ball and uh, do all I can to do that. But if not, you know, I have my education. I'll be graduating next semester, so... Uh, you know, I'll be looking for a job. So if anybody has uh, openings, just give me a call. <laughs> you can also give Barsotti a call if you deal in golf lessons. We'll have that story after this timeout. Even when all of Company B heads for the phone, it's no problem for Gail Godfrey. Delta Airlines, Gail Godfrey. Y'all fly to London, Texas? Yes, that is confirmed. I got some friends who want to talk to you now. Just hold on a second. Thank you. Cincinnati, Ohio. New York City. Monroe, Louisiana. Albuquerque, New Mexico. San Jose, California. Portland, Oregon. Here, Montana. You're all set. Thank you for calling, Delta. Bye-bye. Hi, Gail. Did you get many calls this afternoon? One. Delta, we to fly and it shows. It's obvious Mark Barsotti is a guy you want on your team, unless you happen to be out on the golf course. That's where Barsotti spends his spare time, occasionally shaking up innocent bystanders with errant tee shots. Uh, no, I just simple disrupted a little wedding. I, I probably made their video, you know, yelling for. But it, it was kind of a, it was kind of funny. To, you know, I couldn't help but laugh. But uh, I think I still parred the hole. But that was pretty good. A little golf slice into the wedding party, but still save par. I've never seen it, that many people at a wedding duck before. It uh, kind of ricocheted off the wall and ended up coming back, landing on the green. In fact, I almost birdied the hole. Left it, left it out about two inches and uh, just tapped it in for a par. Routine par. <laughs> Bulldog Spotlight was brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. It's been an eventful couple of weeks in the Fresno State football program going into the WAC. Everyone's excited about that. And one of the men that made it possible is the athletic director here at Fresno State, Gary Cunningham. First of all, congratulations. Now it's official. Now it's official. Well, it was official as of uh, in June when we, when we submitted our letter. But we will be official members of the WAC next year, uh, July 1, 1992. A lot of excitement in town uh, around it, a lot of excitement with our coaches, with our program, and 
Uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us, and uh, we're looking forward to it. I also know the schedule just came out, and it's not going to be easy for Jim Sweeney and the gang, but it is a challenge. Well, it's not, but, uh, you know, the way it's a 10-team league, and one team you won't play every year, and they'll rotate that, and then we'll play four at home, four on the road. But I'm pleased with the schedule. There's a balance of home and away games and uh, not too many away games in a row. Uh, the, one, the one tough trip for us next year is we'll play at BYU and then turn around and have to go to Hawaii the next, the next week. So that's quite a few miles it's, uh, and two tough places to play. But uh, it's a great challenge for us. Uh, we have Washington State at home, Louisiana Tech, who was a bowl team last year. They were at home. Uh, we go to Oregon State, and uh, we have some outstanding teams coming in here. Two, two of the schools that are coming in here were bowl teams last year. Colorado State, Earl Bruce is the coach, the former Ohio State coach, and an outstanding job there, and the University of Wyoming that went uh, to a bowl game last year. So there's a lot of excitement, uh, you know, and I, I think it's the shot in the arm that our football program has needed. Uh, you know, with all the controversy and everything in the Big West com Conference in terms of the future of football and the stability of the league, this puts us in a, uh, one of the top eight conferences in the nation and, and puts us in a situation where, where there's a, there are stable athletic programs, and we're looking forward to that challenge. Talk about a shot in the arm. We've got to talk about two wins in succession against Washington State and Oregon State from the Pac-10. That gives the program prominence around the country. Well, it, uh, those were two good weekends for us. And, uh, of course, the Oregon State win was a little tougher than the, than the Washington State win in that we had to come from behind. But I notice uh, today that Washington State beat uh, Oregon State. And Washington State has an outstanding team. But I'm proud. Anytime you go on the road, it's difficult to play in other places. And uh, when you play Pac-10 teams, regardless of where they are in the standings, uh, that's that you're up against very tough competition. I'm I'm proud of our team and our coaches and uh, we're off to a great start. You know, I look around the stadium tonight and there's these yellow markers out there on the seat options and I noticed during the Northern Illinois game there were a lot more. They're going pretty quickly, aren't they? Well, people are buying them. There's a lot of enthusiasm and when they're gone, they're going to be gone and they won't be available. But we have uh, we've sold 80% of our seat options. Um, very pleased with the way that those have gone but we still have some left we still have some outstanding seats on on the east side and uh, for those people that are still interested in getting seat options and trying to make decisions uh, they should get them because they're not going to be available too much longer and particularly with the schedules that we have in the future not only playing in the WAC conference but we have long-term uh, football relationships with Washington State and Oregon State we will be playing Oklahoma State. We will be playing Baylor home and home. We will be playing Louisville home and home. And we have others on our schedule. So all of those schools will be coming to Bulldog Stadium and treat the fans to some outstanding football. Quickly, because we're running out of time. I know it's October. you got to think in terms of college basketball. And you have a wonderful breakfast coming up on October 15th that the people can come out and visit with the basketball team. Right. Our men's and women's basketball season uh, practice starts October 15th. And we tried this last year. The, the, our community enjoyed it so much. We want to do it again. It's breakfast with the Bulldogs. And uh, it starts at, uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning and goes to almost 8 o'clock in the morning. It's a free breakfast at the North Gym. Uh, the cheerleaders will be there. The team will be introduced. And uh, it really is a fun time. And uh, I know I last year after I went to it, I, uh, I went to work on a high. Not that I don't go to work on a high every day, but uh, it was very special. And it's a fun thing. And uh, I would urge the fans to mark it on their calendar and come out. And I'll guarantee you'll have a great time. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, Randy.
For football season tickets and seat options, call 278-DOGS. In 1987, Ron Jenkins believed being an All-American at Fresno State was all the fulfillment he would need. But Jenkins' perspective changed when he became a group counselor at Fresno's Juvenile Hall. There are rewards. You know, everybody say that that one kid that turns his life around is what you're looking for. And, and that's the reward right there. While Jenkins himself experienced a tough childhood, he has found sanctuary in the community of Fresno. I, I enjoyed the community. It was, a, it was a change from growing up in South Central Los Angeles, um, where, you know, gangs and drugs uh, was a prime activity in my neighborhood. Uh, a negative example of that is the fact that I lost two brothers down there. And being in Fresno kind of lets me forget about those days and, and, and go on with my life. My perspective has stayed the same in the fact that I've always been interested in helping people. In counseling these troubled youngsters, Jenkins is walking down a road few want to travel. Jenkins' own fulfillment comes from helping kids believe in themselves so that they may find a more rewarding future. trust your investment to just any gasoline. That's why 76 developed our 92 Unleaded. It's the highest level octane gasoline you can buy to help your car run better, longer. Because after all, isn't love supposed to last forever? Come to 76 where you find people who care about cars. Fox 26 presents the second annual Project Homeless Sports and Fitness Day, Saturday, October 19th at Woodward Park. Register today for the running events the cycling events. Or if you're into aerobics, sign up now for the B95 Aerobathon. Pick up an entry form at one of these locations. All proceeds will benefit Fresno's homeless. Project Homeless Sports and Fitness Day, sponsored by the Sports Medicine Center in St. Agnes, Fresno Jewelry Mart, Tri Sport Unlimited, and Diet Center, October 19th at Woodward Park. Folks, I've seen a lot of football games, but I never can recall a team scoring 49 points in one quarter. That's what the Bulldogs did tonight in the second quarter. And they lead 66 to 7. Unbelievable performance by Fresno State. This is one of many games on a big day and night in college football. Let's go to the top 10 rankings. Florida State flexing its muscles over a good Syracuse team, 46-16. Miami of Florida, 40 to 3 over Oklahoma State. Those two Florida schools are awesome football units. Elsewhere in the AP Top 25, Washington blanks Arizona. Arizona's been decimated by injury. The Huskies are for real. And Oklahoma struggles a little bit with Iowa State, but the Sooners remain unbeaten. Clemson shocked by Georgia 27 to 12. Uh, Clemson, a lot of people felt would win the national championship this year. Their schedule not as tough, but Georgia wins that one tonight. I guess it's a great night for the Bulldogs, huh? Iowa not enough at home against Michigan after the loss to Florida State. The Wolverines bounce back and win on the road big time, 43-24. Notre Dame in the second quarter. That's their last score there from Palo Alto. The Fighting Irish, uh, Lou Holtz team up by two touchdowns, 14-0. Baylor has made it a rocky road for Houston. That's three losses now for the Cougars and David Klingler, 28, uh, make that 38-21, 38-21 for the Baylor Bears. Penn State in the fourth quarter leads Temple 17-7. Florida blanks LSU. I think Florida's got one of the great teams in the country, although they have suffered one loss, 16-0 in that game. Ohio State gets by Wisconsin. Believe it or not, the Badgers, even with the loss, are 3-1. Auburn, their offense may not be as good as advertised. Southern Mississippi gets the better of the Tigers, 10-9. Pittsburgh squeaks by. Maryland remain unbeaten. UCLA led 24-14 in the fourth quarter. California got a field goal, got a touchdown from Russell White, and a last-minute field goal to nudge the Bruins at the Rose Bowl, 27-24. And the Bears are unbeaten. Alabama rolls over Tennessee Chattanooga. Georgia Tech falls to North Carolina State. Hey, guess the Wolfpack are for real in the ACC, beating the Yellow Jackets. 
Illinois rolls by Minnesota, the Big Ten, 24-3. Texas A&M's a good football team. They do a number on Texas Tech, 37-14. Utah State, that game was played Friday night, 38-10 for the Cougars. Ty Detmer, a couple touchdown passes. Cal State Fort finally got their offense in gear. Unfortunately, their defense could not stop Troy Kopp. And Pacific gets its first victory for the Tigers this year, 56-28. Elsewhere, UNLV at halftime leads Long Beach State. And keep in mind, the 49ers come to Bulldog Stadium next week. You want to get your tickets. I'm not going to tell you that Long Beach State's going to defeat Fresno State, but you ought to come out and look at this Bulldog team. They are for real. We're going to step aside, take a break, have a lot more at halftime. Fresno State up 66-7. Charles didn't want a tribute, so Sunday his friends are getting together to throw him a party. Join special guests Stevie Wonder, Michael Bolton, Hammer, Willie Nelson, Quincy Jones, Gladys Knight, James Ingram, and many more for a night as memorable as the man they gathered to honor. Ray Charles, 50 years in music, Sunday on Fox. Uh huh. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium, where Fresno State is leading at intermission 66-7 on the strength of 49 points in the second quarter. I can't remember a team ever scoring 49 in that many uh, in that short a period of time. Other scores from the WAC, and keep in mind these are the opponents that will be on Fresno State's schedule, except for Air Force, and Air Force defeated Wyoming 51-28, to and we see it twice. I like that. I, I loved it. That's creative. Arizona State tied with Utah. Utah's uh, for real. Remember the Bulldogs won there last year, but Utah's bounced back, and they're having a pretty good season this year against Arizona State from the Pac-10. And Washington State and Oregon State, a couple teams that lost to Fresno State in the last few weeks. Washington State, the Cougars, bounce back big time, 55-7. to Southwest Louisiana behind it all night long, falls to Miami of Ohio, 27-14. Texas finally gets a victory, 28-7. We'll have more at halftime, 66-7, Fresno leads. Sunday. The local school board has ordered me to distribute condoms to you students. The bad boys of comedy are back. You're gonna fill them up with water, take them on the roof, throw them off, huh, boys? Where we love going to the roof. <laughs> Catch it all new in living color. Then Al and the kids have a plan. We had a two-to-one vote to replace our mom with a huge hooded oriental woman. But are they brave enough to go through with it? Me and the kids have something to say to you. What? We love, love you, you, mommy. Find out on an all-new Married with Children Sunday. If you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. Bulldog fans, it was you. For football season tickets and seat options, call 278-DOGS. 66-7, Fresno State leads. We're still at the intermission period. The two teams back on the field. And we'll see some highlights of one of very many of them for uh, this New Mexico group. And you're going to see a nice play here by the defense of Fresno State. The takeaway by Burton. And he'll return it for a touchdown. Just a great individual effort for Fresno State's James Burton. A great moment. And the Bulldogs made a lot of big plays throughout the half. The reverse to Kelvin Means. This is a touchdown. Means earlier had caught a touchdown pass. That was the reverse. And Means, happy. Why not? They score 67 in the first half. And now Fresno State will kick off to New Mexico. And the Bulldogs should be accustomed to this. They did it throughout the first half. And Derek Maloney will kick off for the Dogs. Manley Woods races over and claims it at the two-yard line. And again, Fresno State doing a marvelous job on the specialty team. 24, Aaron Leach down there to greet Woods. Great hustle. You think these guys would be getting a little tired by now. They ran about 10, 40-yard sprints. Pacific Bell gives us the halftime stats, and they are thoroughly one-sided. Any comments, gentlemen? I think we don't have to. <laughs> 451 yards total. How about seven turnovers? 
killed the uh, Lobos all year and really killing them tonight. I still can't recall. I've been trying to think if I've ever seen 49 points in one quarter. I know at Washington had 35 at a Super Bowl against Denver. Goodlow starting at quarterback. He can scramble a little bit to the near side. And he's out across the 20-yard line. Well, just by sheer mathematics, the most lopsided score in the history of college football was Georgia Tech beating a school called Cumberland 222 to nothing. So one of those quarters, they had to score more than 49 points. But I don't remember it. <laughs> I also recall USC scoring 35 in one quarter to come back a long time ago with Anthony Davis well, and beat Notre Dame. But Houston, I don't remember more than David that. David Klingler threw seven touchdown passes in one quarter. There's 49 right There's there 49. if they, if they, kicked if the they made points. the extra points. They might have gone for Q with Houston. <laughs> Kevin, got the needle out. Big time. Darren Boyer, nice effort reading the run and knocking down Derek Kaufman. I think the one thing that you don't want to forget is Kaufman limps out of there is the aggressive play that the Fresno State defense played with in the first half. And we all knew coming into the 91 season, the Bulldogs would score a lot of points. But if they're going to be a championship caliber football team, they have to play well at the defensive end, and they've looked very good tonight. Just executed the defensive game plan. They've mixed coverages up. They've played a lot of bump and run, done different stunts at the line of scrimmage, blitz and linebackers. That's what's got Jeremy Leach out of the game, and now Goodlow's in. Good Marcus Goodlow. Junior quarterback. They have another quarterback, Stoney Case. Great name. I think he's going to be a good player, and Goodlow calls a timeout. Marcus. Marcus, run the play at 65-7. That timeout isn't going to make any difference, pal. Now, I don't mean to correct you, Dave, but it's 66-7. to What did I say, 65? Yeah, you don't want to shortchange the Bulldogs. 66-7, mm. Fresno State leading, and Mike Shepard, you know, at one point was considered one of the best offensive coaches of the country when he was at Long Beach State, and he's looking for one of those answers now well he's very innovative he just kind of think got into a wrestling match or actually a football game that he was out man with with football players and got into a situation where things were going against him kevin coach was talking at the end of the half about getting uh, embarrassed down at albuquerque maybe maybe you could enlighten he's yelling little. no dogs down he wants the defense to perform well give all these guys an opportunity to get in there and play Demetrius Edwards standing there trying to get it the bit. I have a feeling that everybody will play who's suited up tonight and healthy for Fresno State. 14-15 left in the third quarter. In case you just tuned in to KMPH, we are just beginning the second half, and Fresno State leads 66-7. to 49 second quarter points. First down at the 24-yard line for the Lobos. And Goodlow will carry it. And again, Marquez Pope, number 30, up there reading the run. And this is good practice for the Bulldogs to look at an option quarterback. Then we see a hunky Cooper at UNLV down the road. Or and next year, they're going to see Hawaii, who runs a bit of it. Everybody Michael Carter is a great little quarterback for Hawaii, too. Yeah. He'll be back next year. Air Force. Yeah, they don't play Air Force. Yeah, Oregon State, you know, with that spread option, will be a little bit better next year. Bulldogs have them in Corvallis. Quick hitter for a short game. Marcellus Davis ran into Zach Ricks, number 95, the nose guard. Marcellus Davis in at the super back position. His cousin is Dave Stewart. Great pitcher for the Oakland A's. Davis out of Hayward, California. Stewart had a disappointing year for the A's. Did indeed. A number of pitchers for the A's did. Tough to be great for a long period of time, and you can't take it away from Dave Stewart, though he's had a magnificent career in the put American three, League. Didn't he put three 20 win seasons back to back? Four? Pretty outstanding. Third in the yard for Goodlow and the Lobo. Pretty good acceleration for a first down. A nice effort from Marcus Goodlow. I think Steve Lee forgot who was in a quarterback. He took an angle that would have nailed Jeremy Leach, but it isn't going to catch up with Marcus Goodlow. They might have been holding. you got to get off the block. No dogs down. Don't let the man, your man block you. You'll see Steve Lee lose his contain. Marcus Goodlow, we already talked about his athletic ability. Emory Braxton unable to get up. 
Great play. He's gonna be a good athlete. Centennial High School, Los Angeles, California. Marcus Goodlow. Trying to direct the Lobos to an early second half touchdown. Hello. Hello. Some real hitting going on by Fresno State and Steve Lee. And the football goes over on the eighth turnover to Fresno State. Well, tri eighth turnover is real difficult. Great play by Zach Rick at, Ricks at nose guard. Trent Dilfer is in now. Highly touted, great player. Going to be a future Bulldog. 6'4", 225 pounds. Boy, the dogs had the right defense call. They ran a stunt inside and right into the backfield they went. And Fresno State keeping it on the ground. James Allison gets his first call of the night. We haven't seen James in a while. Had a little flashback. No, James getting an opportunity. Had a little flashback there. Really. I thought that was Kelly Skipper in it. Kelly <laughs> got his it up again. Kelly will day. appreciate that since he's coaching all those running backs. Yeah, he's doing a great job. They're prepared, not making mistakes. Great a chance for James, Al James Allison to get some carries here. Jimmy Christian in at the fullback spot. I like him. He's a good-looking fullback. Played a little bit in the opener against Northern Illinois and New Mexico charging offside. Should be a five-yard march off against the Lobos unless one of those Bulldog offensive linemen moved. It didn't appear that they did, but let's check. Dead ball, offside, defense. Well, Trent Dilfer using his cadence. New quarterback, Lobo defensive line's been used to Mark Barsotti's cadence. Trent Dilfer came in there, a little different pitch, maybe went on two. Good job, drumming offsides. Well, New Mexico gave up 60 points at TCU. And they did most of the damage to TCU in the first half. So the Lobos have seen this happen to them once prior this year. Dilfer is going to keep the ball. Nice move. He's to the 31-yard line. What kind of runner is Dilfer? Well, he's, you know, he's a big guy at 6'4", like I said, 225 pounds, but he can jet. He can move it a little bit. He probably runs 4'7", 5", maybe. Prototype. Talk about somebody who's an NFL body. I mean, Trent Swan, he can really throw it. I went down before the game, and they were all throwing long bombs down pregame, and Trent and Mark were throwing some beautiful footballs. Trent's going to be a great player. Jeff Arnold in as the tight end rather than Marty Thompson. Of the second and third teamers will get a lot of playing time tonight. Cut back by Jamie Christian. He's a hard running back to the 26-yard line. A couple of offensive linemen in. Randy Haynes is in and also Kenny Hall. So a couple of changes, although Melvin Johnson's still in at right guard. Jamie Christian, we said before, is a nephew of Dennis Erickson, head coach of Miami. We had a big win today, 40 to 3. Looks like Florida State and Miami all the way to the end of the season when they meet for, I guess, what's going to be the national championship. I still think Washington's a pretty good football team. Oof. They went 54-0 over Arizona tonight, too. That's the team that could win it all. Lots of weapons up there. Seattle. Washington's going to need some help. Those three Florida schools are going to have to knock each other off. Washington go on defeated to win it. I'll tell you what I like about Washington. Florida State has a better offensive football team, but I still think you win championships at the defensive side. I think Florida State's vulnerable. I don't know about Miami or Florida, though. They're awfully good. I don't see the vulnerability of Florida State. They have the, about the fastest defenses I've ever seen. About the only way you can attack them is straight ahead. Well, they're not big. I think you can knock them off the ball. But they also have great depth. That's one thing Michigan talked about. You know, Michigan ran the ball early up the middle, but eventually... Florida State just kept coming in two and three deep, and Michigan's offensive linemen said they just kept bringing in guys who were quicker and faster than the guys who were in there before. So we'll see. Be interesting. Gives us something to talk about, though, huh? We need a few things tonight. <laughs> it's third down and inches for the Bulldogs at the 26-yard line of New Mexico. Played a little bit better than four minutes of this third quarter. The dogs are clean to a 66-7 advantage. Billy Scott in at the center, so... It Three backups in playing right now for the dogs. Randy Haynes is off it, it out, was out of that tackle. James Allison with deep pitch. Good cut for six yards and a first down. Eric Jack made the hit. Nice cut by Allison, and the Bulldogs continue to drive the football in the air and on the ground. 
One of the good things about tonight's game is we haven't seen the yellow flags on the field very often. The game is going to take about four hours as is. If the officials were throwing that hanky out there, we'd be looking at four and a half, probably. Very subdued crowd. They have seen their Bulldogs storm down the field consistently and impressively all night long. Christian. Another big game going right up the middle. Whether it be a mixture of first teamers and second teamers, that offensive line continues to blow out the Lobos off the ball. Well, they're fresh bodies. You have to wonder how many guns that Lobos can bring in and continue to play when they're down like this and just keep pounding away. Frank Mills tied in, so the dogs playing a lot of players right now. Christian hits it to the 10-yard line. Mike Good into the stop. Good is starting his 39th straight game for the Lobos, a four-year starter. His dad played at TCU with Bob Lilly. I'm sure Good has not seen anything like this in his Lobo career, though. And you know Bob Lilly never saw anything like this. Mm -hmm. It's first and goal for Fresno State. They cannot get a first down. They need to get a touchdown. You can Lobos. see the ball squarely on the 10-yard line. Lobos keep coming up with an inside blitz. You might see Trent Dilfer have an opportunity on a bootleg to break contain. Allison, and he's in trouble, and he's throwing for a loss. Haney Sukari, 91. Alex Stoll, 95 there to make the stop. Now the Bulldogs are very conservative in the third quarter, working the clock. Nine minutes left, third quarter, and it's going to be a long second half for the Lobos. Nice of you to go out and get us a supply of no-dos at halftime. <laughs> I don't know that it's working. This is as good as it gets in late-night programming anyway, doesn't it? Dilford. Pretty good protection. Now he's going to have to run for his life. And he runs well down the sideline. Looking like Randall Cunningham jumping into the air. He's down to the five-yard line. I don't know that you want... Trent Dilford doing that, but you got to love his effort. He's getting a chance to play in a football game. Great protection by the Bulldog offensive line. They've practiced this as a fake zero route, which is a delayed route by the receiver. Good job keeping it alive. Trent shows some good speed here. Frank Jones wants the ball. Like said, <laughs> Trent! Let's see his leapers. No. Now you gotta, you gotta admit, that looks like Randall cutting him against the Packers last year, right? Yeah. Third down and five for a Bulldog touchdown. Allison, touchdown Fresno State. The draw works to perfection, and Allison scores, and Fresno State builds their lead to 72-7. And there are no more fireworks well, they are. in the cannon, I don't <laughs> think. They kind of saved them. They, before, they were running three or four at a time. This is only one. Just simple trap play. James Allison with the draw trap. Just comes in there. Easy touchdown, nice little spin for the six. Melvin was looking for somebody to block. Nobody was in the hole. Johnson was the trap man. Nobody was there. Derek Mahoney adds an extra point. It's 73-7. We'll look into the books, come up with a few more football stories for you, because this football game is history. Fresno State leads 73-7. Will they score 100? We'll see. Crispy chicken. Choose any one for just five ninety nine. Nobody's cooking like today, KFC. Nobody's cooking like today, KFC. Nobody's 
73-7 Fresno State leading. Still plenty of time left in the third quarter. 8-29. And Mahoney kicking off again. And Manley Woods will watch this one go right through the end zone. So it'll be first down for Marcus Goodlow at the 20-yard line. See if they go three deep in the quarterback situation at New Mexico before the game ends. I know they have Stoney Case on the traveling squad. He's here tonight. Kevin, yeah, we, we started to talk about it, and then we got a little off track. But uh, you know, Jim Sweeney said at the end of the half uh, when Randy asked him about, you know, kind embarrassing. of embarrassing. Embarrassing. And he talked about being embarrassed at Albuquerque. Maybe you well, one of the things that when New Mexico had beaten the Bulldogs 45 to 20 down in uh, Albuquerque a few years ago, something that is very uncommon that had happened in was that, that on the public address at the scoreboard, they were flashing Sweeney, Sweeney, Sweeney. So the crowd would chant Sweeney, Sweeney. And uh, as I understand it, it got quite loud and got quite obnoxious. And I'm sure that it, he lost a little sleep, humiliated and embarrassed. And I guess, you know, the other question, do two, two wrongs make a right? I mean, but you can't, you can't take a knee. And you get a four-quarter game, and, and you keep preaching that, and you owe it to your players to give them the opportunity to continue to go out and play. Well, especially the young guys getting a chance here in the second half because, uh, you know, they go out there and bust their backsides in practice. You definitely can't ask them to, to back off. Pitch to Wilson, and Mark running the far side, runs around Youngblood, turns the corner up near the 50-yard line. Nice effort <laughs> by Wilson. Run out by Sam Watson, number 27. You can hear Willie Robinson, the defensive backfield coach for the Bulldogs. I can hear him up here the whole time yelling option, an option, trying to yell, tell Armin Youngblood to get out and get contained. Most points scored, 65, San Jose State. That's in this the Bulldogs, stadium. In this stadium. Yeah, so this is a record. We're on the same page, literally. Largest point spread, 52. So this is the most points ever scored at Bulldog Stadium. Second down. Now this will be a first down for Marcellus Davis running hard inside the Bulldog 40-yard line. Taken out by Brian Porter. To Brad Bell, 54 in the game. Demetrius <laughs> Edwards, 93. So all the second teamers in the ball game for the Bulldogs. This basic toss sweep. Guy's yeah, just not playing the right angles, running at the wrong time. Marcellus Davis, I think, has a little bit of better speed than Derek Coffey. Good low, a little bit of a mix-up with Marcellus Davis, and he's going to pay the price. They blow it dead back near the 44-yard line. Randy has to sit here in the, looking at the press guide, all the scoring, and going down, and everything's kind of shattered. Most points scored in the first half was 35. Well, the stadium records are gone. We got to research now and find out what the most points a Bulldog team has ever scored. Totally, we, we're still looking quite candidly, and we'll try to come up with that answer for you. Most points first half is 45. Well, they broke that easily with 66 tonight. Second and 17 for the Lobos, and Marcos Goodlove. And he's going to run with the football. Now he delivers it downfield. And he missed Manley Woods. He had a crease to run. And he decided to throw at the last instant. So it'll be third and 17 for the Lobos. Here we go. You have something for me, Kevin? I think so. Most touchdowns scored was five. Well, I found out that the Fresno State record is 80. I don't know who it was against. They just, somebody wrote me a note. They passed it down 80, so that's very much within reach. 30 years ago this year, the Dogs had an undefeated team. I'd like to do that again here in 1991. And a middle screen to Davis. Nice play, but it's short of the first down stick. Unbeaten and on tie. Cecil Coleman was the coach, just in case you remember. Did you look that up? No. You knew that? Of course I did. Okay. It'll be fourth down and nine. And Troy Rawson comes in. They won't try the long field goal, not when they're down 73-7. I think they might go for a fake punt here. I mean, they're on a 35-yard line. 
Talk about playing it safe, huh? Going for the coffin corner. Not a particularly good kick either by Troy Rossin, although it's out of bounds at the 14. Coffin. I guess that uh, Mike Shepard wants the dogs to have to march 85 yards or so. Too many, too many men on the field. Let me have a captain. Let me have a captain. White captain. White captain. White captain. Where's the captain? Don Carey's taking charge. Give me a captain. Well, somebody can just answer the man's question. You want the penalty? I'm sure that they do. Give him a ch give him an opportunity to go for Five it. Five yards. And three. Plus the punt wasn't particularly good anyway. No, you're losing 15. Illegal substitution. On the return team, replay fourth down. Must mean what? One guy came out and came back off. Yeah, he came back, came out and came back and didn't get off in time. <laughs> that sounded correct. You know the 80 points was against? New Mexico. No. 1942. We got a good research department here, don't we? Fort Ord. Well, that's because all the guys from Fort Ord were over fighting uh, the Japanese at that time. Ford Ord, 80 points. And if the Bulldogs score another touchdown and the PAT, they would equal that against New Mexico. The Lobos will go for it on fourth and four at the Fresno State 30-yard line. And they'll have the first down to Manley Woods. Breaks a tackle. He stepped out of bounds, but a nice effort by Manley. Good throw by Goodlow. Ball had the, seems like he's got a real good zip on the ball. He had good protection. Looked like Sam Watson went for the interception and got burned here. No, nope. that was Burton. Sorry, He's Sam. Pretty, Burton. pretty fun to watch a left-hander throw. Standing in there, this is fun, taking a little kiss on the chin. Modern day NC2A record. There's the reverse to Wilson. Great Fresno play. State in tandem led by Nick Surface reads it easily. Great play by Chris Williams, number 45. Had two blockers on him, stuck his hand out there. Pulled the jersey. Well, New Mexico seems that they're playing with a little vigor and pep. I mean, they're, they're trying to compete and go after a little bit. Victor Ventura getting some playing time at the inside linebacker for the dogs right now. Also, Chris Williams is in there. Good love. Rolling to his right. It's a tough throw for a left-hander. And he could not make it an accurate one. Good defense by Chris Williams. Staying home on the bootleg. Not losing contain. Good blow. Looks like he had a little uh, knee problem there. Got that brace going all the way down his leg. Well, there was the quarterback controversy in the spring when they demoted Jeremy Leach from first string to third string and had to work his way back up the ladder. Goodlow was first string and Stoney Case was second string. And I know, Kevin, you had some thoughts about that. You didn't feel that it was really fair to demote a guy who's taken all the legs all and put his, put his game on the line and body on the line and goes out and competes. And we understand maybe that he didn't have as good a junior year as they thought that he should have and wanted to motivate him. And thus Jeremy Leach fought through the battle and easily could have walked away and gone and transferred someplace else. That was a terrific play by Ventura. That was a little shovel pass. The Lobos had three blockers out in front and Ventura sifted through. Otherwise, that ball's gonna, that play's going to go for a touchdown. Look at the three blockers out there. It is great defense. No dogs down. Well, this will be a 33-yard attempt by Dave Margolis, who came in this year heralded as a fine junior placement specialist in his last seven last year. Missed his first three to begin the year. Lost his job for a while, has regained it, and kicks a three-pointer for the Lobos. A mock cheer here at Bulldog Stadium. The Lobos get three, but they're down 73-10. to 10. Bulldog football is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury, what a luxury car should be. It's Motor Trend's car of the year, and by Taco Bell, home of the great value menus, so run for the border. The new 
1992 Mercury Grand Marquis. More room than Oldsmobile 98 or Buick Park Avenue. More power than Olds and Buick from a new, more powerful V8 engine. And more value. Grand Marquis is priced $1,700 less than Olds 98. $2,100 less than Park Avenue. New Grand Marquis. Proof that more of a good thing is a very good thing. Four minutes, 41 seconds of playing time remain in the third quarter. And Fresno State leading 73-10 after the Margolis field goal. Ojeda will kick off for the Lobos. Kelvin Means has a crease. Kelvin Means nearly broke it for a touchdown. But the only thing the dogs haven't done tonight is take a kickoff or a punt back all the way. Kelvin one step away from doing it right there. Thirty-seven yard return for Means. Notice that Dilfer and uh, both Dilfer and Barsotti do not wear the knee braces. I see a lot of quarterbacks. What, what's your thought on that, Kelvin? Well, I guess they go by if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Uh, sometimes when you'd like to see guys just doing something preventative to have a sleeve or anything on there to keep the knee warm. Dilfer, and he's on his way. 20, he run. 10, 5, Dilfer scores! More fireworks. They're only shooting off one at a time right now. They're conserving them. 79-10. There it is. There are the numbers. They're chasing 103. They talk about a hole you could drive a truck through. Dilfer was looking to pitch the ball, so he looked up and he had a hole about five, ten feet wide to dance through. Well, we thought he had a question to ask me about his speed. The kid can run for 225 pounds. Getting those knees up. Up. Oh, he didn't quite make it that time. Well, Mahoney did, and there's 80 points. So next to Fort Ord, enter New Mexico. 80 to 10, Fresno State. 425 left, third quarter. No doubt about it, it's a buyer's market at your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Tell us what you want, tell us what you need, just tell us what it takes and we'll make it work. Now get $500 cash back on Plymouth Voyager with a great low price and lots of features during Clearance 91. Get $1,000 back on Plymouth Sundance or $1,200 back on Sundance America for first-time new car buyers. We know what it takes to deal, so give us your bottom line, we'll make it work. It's a buyer's market during Clearance 91. See Fresno Chrysler Plymouth now. Baby blue can like baby train in the back, baby I'm going to the bear. Oh, he's got the fifty nine cent selection, he lets free ice, cold pepper be filled. I never stop a rocket, I never stop a talking, I'm stopping down the taco bear. Tigers and the starters and marinas and more, it's fifty nine cent, oh yeah. Run for the bar, I gotta get me some. Take a shot, cut if you know I'm hot. Little baby, keep making a bar. That is not a misprint. It is Fresno State 80, New Mexico 10. Not a misprint that it's still the third quarter either. There's a movie a long time ago called The Longest Day. Great movie. And this has been the longest day and night for New Mexico's Lobos. But what a tremendous performance by Fresno State at home. Well, everybody's going to enjoy watching the films of this one, but particularly the kickoff coverage team. They have been spectacular, and there's no let-up. They're still running down there with reckless abandon, getting after people. This is the furthest I think the Lobos have gotten a kickoff out all night to the 21-yard line. And again, James Blakeney, transfer, played to Washington State down there, hammering someone. Really, there's not a, an area that has not shown up tonight for the Bulldogs. They've been excellent in every regard. 
Marcos Goodwill had a little bit more offense. That last drive, a little life to the offense. Playing for Jeremy Leach, who had a miserable first half. Under duress, Goodwill's long throw to Woods. Nice catch, Manly Woods. Burton's upset with himself, but Manley did a nice job reading the pass and getting the football. Well, Emory Braxton had been blanketing Manley Woods.